Hey and welcome to this video. If it's your first time here, my name is Lachlan Rousen. I'm Raf and we are Australia's number one health and fitness podcast, The Mind Muscle Project. So if you're here, what you can expect from us in the future is... Well, we interview the biggest names in fitness on Mondays. We've had Matt Fraser, Brent Fikowski, Pat Bell, not pretty much all the boys. On Wednesdays, uh, we talk about our athletic experience in our mid to early 20s. We've been to regionals multiple times. We talk about the most current and the most exciting new stuff in our industry. And on Fridays on the podcast, we delve into fitness business. So we've started three gyms ourselves and we talk about where we want to go with them, how we're doing it and how to succeed in the fitness industry. So if you want to see more from us in the future, more exciting content interviews, we've got heaps of stuff. You can go to the links below. We've got our website. We've got the top 10 most downloaded podcasts of all time. You guys will really enjoy those. And we've got plenty more content on our Instagram. So go there as well. And if you like videos, subscribe to the YouTube channel down below. <laughs> Start. Start. <laughs> Sounds just like him, right? <laughs> who, uh... Who, uh... <laughs> Travis Mayer. Travis Mayer. <laughs> it, is, it is easy to copy people when you have it in real time. Mm. All right. Much easier than FaceTime or something. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Mama's Project, welcome to another episode. This week, we have on the sixth fittest man in the, uh... What region is it? Atlantic. Atlantic region. Travis Mayer. So, before we dive into that, I want to know, what are you doing right now that you have all this spare time to yourself? Are you, are you training or are you taking legitimate time off? Uh, I'm, mm, that's the right word. I have free range for my coach to kind of do whatever for the next few days. So few days? Yeah. Well, that's a so long, we're that's a long off season. Yeah. So, we're sitting down. We were supposed to sit down today, but he's not feeling well. So, we are going to sit down, I think, tomorrow or Thursday and kind of come up with a game plan going forward mm. about competitions in the off season and what kind of the plan is going forward. Mm. What, what about from like a business perspective? Obviously we've stepped into training think tank HQ. Very impressive by the way. Great setup. How do you, uh, how do you tackle it from that now that you've got more time to put into the business or anything? Uh, I mean, not too much more. I mean, the main goal for me is still the games and competing right now. Um, that's just kind of the setup I have created for myself. Yep. Um, so, I mean, I have a GM that kind of handles more of that stuff that when there is <coughs> things we need to discuss and kind of get in place, uh, we're starting a new nutrition challenge for the members and some other things like that, some more outings. But for the most part, the actual more business side kind of i'm not doing too much else right now um just kind of some downtime in general mm. and just kind of stepping back i feel like the state of georgia was set up to sit back and relax a little bit is uh if it's pretty peaceful around here it is in the suburb area it is right more in atlanta it's a little busy and hectic yeah i would never live there though you would never live in the city no yeah okay way too much traffic yeah it's um I thought it was I thought it was pretty cool driving in, Raf. What did you What do you think? Mm, well, we live basically in the forest. That's how I would describe it. <laughs> this is the forest in the woods. <laughs> we woke up in the morning and uh, we, we, it was night. So when we got there, we didn't know. And then we opened up the curtain in the morning. I'm like, oh, we're inside of a forest. Oh, it's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> we had deep in the forest. Like twenty trees. <laughs> <laughs> There's maybe fifteen trees out back or something. If where you, you have, guys are staying. if you have one to two trees in Australia where you live, it's like pretty impressive. Yeah. Like the greatest in so the you're area. In the forest. Not in the forest, <laughs> but here you are because there's now like we are in the, forest. Okay, in the forest. We are deep in the forest. But uh, the bears here still looks the same, huh? Like grizzly bears and shit. Is that an American? Y yeah, but not <laughs> anywhere around you here. <laughs> you might have some snakes. Yeah, I wondered that. I kicked the um the ball went way over into the corner underneath this big trailer thing. And I was thinking like, was it would I get bitten by a rattlesnake? Is that what? No, you wouldn't have a rattlesnake. Okay, what would what would be the first thing that would attack me? A squirrel. A squirrel. No. What kidding. about Max? <laughs> Who? Max. The dog? <laughs> Matt Max Max hack. <laughs> <laughs> Getting attacked uh, by Max. Yeah, he probably would just be sitting in his office and not even know you kicked it out there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so no... Oh, shit. No serious plans for anything at the moment, business-wise. And then no. what about family-wise? Did you have the second... This time last year, we recorded almost exactly after you qualified. So you he have was the, not born yet. He wasn't born yet. No. Okay. So he's nine months. Yeah. Okay. Um, the other one's going to be three and three months so they're both they're actually like a week apart 
well, two years to the day, pretty much mm. about exactly. Mm. Um, so no, so my wife has off summer cause she's a teacher. So she has the next eight weeks off. So we, after regionals, we stayed in West Palm for an extra four days and just kind of relaxed. Uh, that was like the first time we've had a vacation since our honeymoon or since, since I, pro- your honeymoon. I we, had, we never even took a honeymoon, but <laughs> since I proposed to her, when was that in 2013, that's the first, so you took a holiday for the first time. Yeah. Wow. So, cause usually her schedule, like, cause we're usually like, we've been the first week or second week of regionals. So she's still working. So when we go to regionals, she has to be back to work Monday. Mm. So then training for the games is usually then. So I'm training really hard during the summer when she actually has off. And then when I have off, she's back to work. So it's never really lined up. Right. So with <clears throat> now that regionals, we were the third week. She didn't have to go back, so we were able to stay and kind of make a little vacation out of it. Right. So, so just, you didn't have that vacation the last year you, you missed out? Mm. You just jumped straight back into training? Is that why? When? Uh, in 2015? Yeah. When I didn't go? Yeah. I actually took a month off. Oh, okay. I didn't want to do anything. But you didn't, you didn't vacation at all? Mm. So, uh, you feel differently this year to how you did in 2015? Yeah. So, in 15, um, I was... I mean, even f- at the 14 games, I just, m- my head wasn't really in the right space. Kind of, I wasn't enjoying it. And yeah, I guess that's the simplest way to put it is I just wasn't enjoying it. And so in 15, when I didn't make it, I think I just really wanted a break. Yeah. So I took a full month of, I mean, nothing. I didn't row, run, nothing. I was just being lazy. Oh, like no exercise? None. Oh, wow. I didn't. Did you get out of shape? Like, of course. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So the build back up to that was miserable. <laughs> I remember coming back and just, it was like being in CrossFit for the first time in the first like three weeks. I'm just, but you would have got it back fast. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I just, for me, I needed some time off and decompress and be away from it all. Um, I kind of just hung out with Max here and my mm-hmm. wife and just kind of took it easy. But this time it was like once they announced I took sixth. I kind of knew when they set the points because I knew my points for that. Um, it's like disappointing because, I mean, you train all year for that and you want to be hearing your name and going to the games. and. But it kind of like fired me up in a sense where in the past I was kind of like, no, I just I need to step back. But immediately it was like, okay, look back at the year and what did I do wrong? What could I have done better? And pretty much just started analyzing everything that I was doing. Yeah. Um, and so I think it kind of fired me up to start getting on a better plan and being a little more diligent uh, for the coming years and making sure it's more dialed in. Started thinking of like, okay, what competitions can I do next? How can I get kind of on, back on the roll of this? Um, and what can I do to improve? Hmm. I think that was kind of a bigger step for me. Um, was it unexpected that you felt fired up about it as opposed to yeah. mostly disappointed? Yeah, I mean, I'm not very emotional at all uh, about a lot of things. And when I got, so when we left the venue, I couldn't stay and like watch the award ceremony or anything. I was like, I need to leave. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I pretty much just grabbed my son. And my wife had our other boy and we just kind of walked out and we got to the car and I just like lost it. And I don't ever cry, ever. Uh pretty sure the last time I cried was when my grandfather passed away, which was a while ago. So I think it kind of just, for me, was like a click. Like, okay, like, you do really care about this sport. Like, mm. <laughs> this is what you want to be doing. And I think sometimes I even, like, I'm like, man, am I good enough at this, blah, blah, blah. And I think I, sometimes I, like, second-guess myself. or, But it just kind of, like, fired me up. And I was like, I never want to feel like this again. Mm. I'm like, I'm sick of, like, you look up, you see – Ethan and myself on the screen and I knew it was him and it's just like okay did I that three seconds could I not have pushed harder for three seconds because that would have been a deciding factor if I went Mm. could I have been one place better on Linda would have gone you know so it's you start thinking of all these little details that in the moment you're like no I'll be fine I'll make it up on the next one when at the end of the day it wasn't Mm. Um, because I mean on Sunday I pretty much gave it everything I had and fell short I mean, I took a one and a three, um, but that just didn't pan out the way I hoped, but kind of looking forward to what's to come and kind of take it as a learning curve. 
Sounds like Fikowski, the two years in a row that he didn't make it, he missed up by like one handstand push up mm. or like half a second or something. Yeah, I mean, it it fired him three up. seconds on the final or five seconds on the final workout. Two places better on Linda. I mean, it's. And then you also were telling me earlier that you actually would have qualified in every region. Yeah. With your score. Yeah. I mean, in the world ranking, whatever it is, it's 18th. Um, so, I mean, to see that you're beating other athletes that did make it it's frustrating to see yeah um i mean i think anybody would be frustrated in that situation just knowing like okay these other people that qualified you beat them in their scores but i also have always believed like other people like would you ever move and i said no like if i can't qualify in this region i don't deserve to beat the games like the point is to win at the games and if you can't perform in one of the harder regions then you shouldn't be there anyway Mm -hmm. um because i definitely think we usually send a pretty stacked group of guys from the Atlantic region each year. Um, but I think it, for me, it's always been, you need to qualify in this region. And if not, you don't deserve to go. Right. <coughs> when you got the, uh, like when you had the, the moment where you saw you were six and it was like, fuck history is <coughs> repeating itself again. Was that a frustrating feeling or was that like, a, okay, I've done this before. I can do it again. Sort of feeling. Yeah. I mean, right when I crossed the line, I wasn't a hundred percent sure because mm. I knew Ethan still wasn't done yet, and a couple other people weren't done. So I was like, "We're about to find out." Mm. Um, and I peeked over and I saw Max, and I said, "Yes or no?" And he shook his head, "No." And then immediately I was like, "All right." So I and mean, Max knows. Yeah, <laughs> Max <laughs> makes no mistakes. <laughs> he definitely knew. Yeah, six uh, calculators going and shit. Yeah, he definitely yeah. knew. I mean, I knew what my points was, and it was eighteen back, and Ben beat me. And then John, so I was like, the only two people pretty much are, I mean, Noah's not going to bomb to where he's not going to even qualify. Um, but he should have probably bombed a bit more just to <laughs> just to help out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but it was depending on pretty much Ethan's score. Right. Um, and then at the end of the day, I mean, hey, congrats to him. He performed. He showed up on each workout. Um, he was just better on that day. And, mm. you know, I mean, I had some mistakes. More or less, I'd, what, my placing out of three – the 29 on Linda, which was just horrible. Was that, uns- was that surprising or not? Uh, I had about five no reps on bench. Okay. And so for me, bench for what? P- he said my hips uh, uh, okay. coming up, but I, s- I swore I glued those things down. The kipping bench press. Yeah, I, I <laughs> definitely didn't because I remember when we did it in training, Max was like, just be 100% cautious. And so I was when we did it here. And then when I got there, I was like, do not let your hips come up because if like this was the bench – this dude's face was right here, like, at my butt, like, just watching my butt. No, like, no, tell him what you really want to say. <laughs> <laughs> the way I either described it to everybody else was he was pretty much at my butthole, just looking, like, seeing if there was any air or, like, it any could smell sunlight. It. Yeah. He's like, fucking just... smell it? <laughs> come off the bench. <laughs> the fart can but squeak was... out this daylight. Yeah. And I was just like, man, this dude is right there. Um, but I mean, clearly I need to get better at bench press. That's not good enough. Uh, so, I mean, I had a 29 there and then I had a seventh, I think. And then a 12th event four four, I think is what actually cost me the whole thing. Uh, Sunday I had a one and a three. So those were pretty event well four was oh, the snatch burpee. Snatch burpee. It's uh, a good workout for you, bro. Yeah. Didn't go, didn't go to plan. No reps. No, well, I did have one on uh, 175 for the snatch. They said my foot touched the line. Um, yeah. I so got I mean, a lot of people. Yeah, so, I mm. mean, but that wasn't it. Um, I think sometimes just, like, I knew what was about to happen, like, the pain and kind of I felt like I built it up a little more than I should have in my own head. Right. Because um, I knew of how it felt when we did it here. And I didn't really think of it when – like we finished the workout or when we were in the middle of the workout and about to start, but more when I was done, I went back and watched it like that night. I went back and watched it and knew that that was worthless. It was just a horrible performance. You went too slow. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my burpee speed was just, I just dropped down. And like when we did it here, I was pretty much full speed dropping and then bouncing right back up there. I like paused for like a split second on all of them. And the last 12 burpees, three people passed me. And it was just kind of like, and I watched it and was like, man, that was horrible. Is that it because was, you thought about the pain and you wanted to stay away from that? Is that what you, unconsciously? You know, possibly. Yeah. I, you know, like, it's hard to, like, look back and be like, this is exactly what it was. Um, 
I mean, not making excuses because everybody had the same amount turnaround time, but the turnaround time was fast because of the CBS thing. Um, cause oh, they were doing that? live CBS sports. Yeah. So they do the games, right? Yeah. Yeah. So we, uh, had where the females went, then the males went and then we went again. Okay. So there wasn't the females and then the males again. Right. Cause of airing time. So they wanted to do the final heat of women, right? And like the men and then the men again, then the women, um, or it was like three heats of women, whatever it was, but it was just a quicker turnaround than what we anticipated, but it was for everybody else. And I felt like I was more just gassed and like the speed and probably improper fueling a little bit to some degree. But looking back, I think that was ultimately the deal breaker on why I didn't go. I knew Linda for me was going to be bad no matter what. Yeah. Um, and I was sitting 11th after day one, like I think it was 20 points out. So I was like, I've come back from way further than that. Um, but the cards just didn't line up and hmm. so you stay home another year. What was the uh what was the conversation like with Noah? Cuz obviously you're training partners all year and you almost <laughs> expect that you guys will be going to Yellow. I mean, that's the the kind of shit talking you you do with your training yeah. partner, right? So Yeah, I mean, it's pretty much always Max in here trash talking both of us and then we'll let the competition settle it. Like yeah. it'll all happen in the games. Um but I mean, I'm happy for him. Um, at the end, it was congratulating him and wishing him the best. You know, I, he was bummed. Uh, sent me like a pretty nice text, just like, dude, this sucks. I mean, I'm aware. Yeah, it does. But you got to kind of take it as a learning process. And Max actually reached out and was like, Hey, would you mind like helping me train him for the games? And then I'm like, no. Um, <clears throat> I don't mind at all because oh, has it? Has <laughs> <So> like, <laughs> but, but, no, no, <laughs> uh, no, I'm not doing that. No uh, way. No, yeah, he, uh, Fuck he that guy. I actually hate him. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was like the day after, so I mean, I'm still like pretty fired up and frustrated about the whole thing. But I was like, yeah, I mean, it would be beneficial to him and me. I mean, I'm still, I still need to keep training and yep. push myself to get back there, and it's still gonna help me no matter what training. Um, and since he's going to be moving back to Miami, I might as well get in as much training with him as now as I can. Yeah. Um, and any way I can help him succeed. I mean, Max has kind of built this and it's pretty cool to be a part of, but if there's any way of, to me, I let him down, even though he'll say I didn't, whatever, but I did because I mean, we've been on this journey for so long and at the end of the day, it's being at the games and kind of showing what we work so hard for and to be on a team with Noah and both of us have the same coaching and how I do in training. And then just like the little mishaps I had at regionals, it sucks a lot. But I mean, if I can help them out and training him to hopefully let him have a better performance, mm. I mean, that's all I can do. Yeah. He'll do exceptionally well. Cause he did really well last year. Fifth, right? Fourth. Mm. Fourth. Yeah. <laughs> well, when the whole wait, fourth after <laughs> Ricky got done. Yeah. Yeah. You know, he was actually at the Pacific regional competing. Not not competing. No, no. Just posting his times about what he did earlier in the day. Like he would do the workouts in the morning at his gym, post his times, which are like insane times. Obviously, there's no judging and stuff. And then he would rock up to regionals and walk out. He's still really popular. You know, a lot of people getting photos with him and stuff. A lot of people shaking his hand and all that sort I mean, of thing. Hey, whatever works. Yeah. No, I just thought it was interesting. The um, I just thought the Australian public would generally have turned on him. But it seems like people... There's always two sides, right? There's still the diehard fans will always be the diehard fans. Yeah. I mean, he was the underdog last year at the games and performed well. I mean, but how much of that was yeah. on the performance side? And But, I mean, you definitely can't put it past anybody for how hard they work. I mean, yeah. you definitely still have to put the work in whether you're taking stuff or not. Yeah. Um, I definitely never would do that. And <laughs> I don't think it's fair, especially in the sport. But, I mean, there's definitely probably people out there that are doing it. Mm. I mean, there's a lot of money on the line. So... Yeah, people do crazy things when there's money on the line. Yeah, speaking of money on the line, took home a lot of money in Dubai. How yeah. do you f how do you feel about the upcoming season? And do you think you'll you'll change anything? Because this year you had like a full training year with Noah, right? Which was yeah. different to last year because you only had a small mm -hmm. part of the season. Yeah. So this year we had a full like he was here all year training. Like you felt like your it was really helping mm -hmm. your your training. Yeah, I mean, I definitely think it let it doesn't let le either one of us let up because things that I'm good at he might not be as good at and what I'm not as good at, he's really good at. So I think for me to improve, I have to push in those areas and try to beat him and him the other way around. So, 
like we definitely did a bunch of running this year because I'm good at running and yeah. happened to come up with the triple three, which was perfect for both of us. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, there's definitely areas that like that helped a lot, but as an individual, I've always been pretty good about pushing myself just as is. And I usually train really close to the same way I compete. Like yeah. a lot of my training times here when we did the events were faster than what I did at regionals. Right. Um, but I'm just capable of doing that. Um, so I think in that regards, it helps Noah, but then he helps me learn how to compete. Right. Um, so I think it'll be kind of good and bad. Cause I mean, it's nice having him here to train. Um, but then I know he also wants to be with his woman. Yeah. That's, that's, that's the reason for the move. We'll talk about that with him, but that, that is the reason, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's not, it's not moving coaches or anything like that. No. Yeah. Yeah. You can only stupid. take, you can only take you for like one year. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <Yeah. laughs> so it's it might be colors. the other way around. <laughs> Yeah. If he shows up on time, then it would be all right. <laughs> oh shit! That's probably because he's stuck on his phone. We <laughs> talked about that last night with Chris. But uh, <laughs> what he's on his phone? Phone addiction. Yeah. Small segue. How do you how do you manage your uh, your drug habits? Yeah. Your, <laughs> your your addictive habits to your phone, if there are any. because uh, you have to you have to uphold your personal brand and stuff, right? Yeah. So so you need to post and stuff, but yeah, I'm definitely not the best at that. Um, <laughs> I'll even come into Chris's office and be like, what should I post? I need something <laughs> to say or do. Uh, I just have never been good at that stuff. Yeah. Um, but it was the other day I was like, man, I randomly just click on Instagram and look at it for no reason. And then I was like staring at it and was like, well, what am I even looking at? <laughs> like, why am I even on this right now? Uh, so one of my goals this year is not to be on it nearly as much just throughout the day. Cause it, randomly I would just pick up my phone, look at it. And I'm like, like what? I, I was just on this. Like, what are you actually mm. looking at? It's called an addiction. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, we all have them. Yeah, um, I'm, absolutely. I'm not afraid to admit it. Uh, <laughs> 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 so proud. Hey, that's good. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, I think from a phone perspective, <laughs> just try to be more present was one of the things I think even especially at home, just spending more time communicating more with my family and wife and versus just getting sidetracked by worrying about the social media and just kind of let the performance speak for itself mm. um, as much as it sucks not making it um, kind of the granite games will be coming up so I'm going to be doing that uh, Dubai and probably Wadapalooza so those will probably be the next three competitions going forward is that I'll more than what you normally do uh, last year you did Dubai last year I did Dubai and Wadapalooza as a team oh uh, okay uh, so I'll probably do granite games individual yep. Dubai individual of course and then probably unless Noah's like hey let's do team again um we'll probably do individual um I think for me I just need to work on getting better at competing <clears throat> what do you mean by that um there's usually in every competition for me there's always one workout or one tad slip up that honestly cost me a victory uh Dubai there was one workout and it was like a 20th and that if I took three spots better would have been first, you know. So what was the workout? I'd have to go back and look, okay. but I just remember like looking back who, at who all. Who won? Goodmanson. Goodmanson. Oh, okay. So you you guys were super close. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, there's definitely areas like that can be improved, and overall for a competition for me, um, this Linda was probably the biggest hurt. Um, that was probably more of just a training error with my bench press. Like it's just not very good. Um, but I should have probably pushed a little harder on the cleans and deadlifts to make up for it. Yeah. yeah. Um, that was kind of the game plan, but the no reps just each time it was a, another 20 second break. Cause I was like, if I fail again, it's just going to be another one or mm. whatever it may be. So then you add hundred seconds up of that. And that would have been probably close to what I was in training. I was like 1540 in training. Okay. And then I got time capped with one squat clean left there. Um, but little things like that in each competition, there's always been one little hiccup that kind of throws it off of not being a podium or throws it off from not winning. And so for me over the years, it's always been don't do as many competitions, but just due to like, I need to focus more on training, but I think my training is kind of where I need to be and how I can be competitive and then just learning to execute like I am here at the gym. Yeah. Cause I'm really good at that here. Mm. Um, probably cause it's more of a controlled setting. Yeah, of course. I know what music I want to put on and listen for the day. You can start when you want to start that sort of thing. Yeah. yeah. 
uh, show up at 10 o'clock, start training, warm up and then go versus when something else you have to worry about CBS. And then it's like, yeah, you get in your own head a little bit. Um, and that's probably just some little errors that I need to fix for mm-hmm. myself. Um, some people are better competitors. Some people are better trainers. Um, it was the same thing back when I used to race motocross. I was really good on like tracks and practice, but then sometimes when you line me up with 40 other people going into the corner and just bonk. Mm. Um, so it's definitely been a learning curve. Um, been reading a lot of books recently on some brain stuff and stuff I can work on to improve it and kind of fix myself and kind of yeah. hopefully improve. And I mean, I, for me, that's the biggest thing. I'm still enjoying the sport. I still love what I do. Um, and at the end of the day, I still want to win. So that's going to be kind of the goal going forward is mm-hmm. executing more efficiently on each workout and improving those. Mm. <coughs> you win the games, what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you competed really well in Dubai. I mean, you beat all the guys that qualified through your region. You beat Alec and Ben and who else was in the region? That, oh, no, I didn't do Dubai. <laughs> and um, I don't know. Alex Anderson? He, he was there. Yeah. yeah, he was in Dubai. Yeah, you beat him as well. Yeah. And you beat John Pat, the strongest man in the world. Yeah, I think that was strong. Yeah, <laughs> he didn't qualify for the region. That's missed out by two spots. That is a true. That's the that's only travesty crime. bigger than you missing out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's a crime to humanity. <laughs> like people not being able to see that monster <laughs> compete. Yeah. Well, I think it would have been okay for this regional, but hopefully, if there's a max lift, he'll make it because that's what you want to see. Yeah, I just hope that we don't build him up too much because if we do, they'll go drug test him and he'll probably never <laughs> compete ever again. But I've got to see him at least have one crack at it. <laughs> He's a freak. Um, did you s- he posted a video recently of him doing, uh, you know, they do the running backflips and they do the bounding and then they triple spin it. Yeah. End. He can do that. Fucking hell. It's like 120 kilos. <laughs> That's crazy. He truly That's is impressive. the scariest guy. That's crazy. Crazy. Yeah. That's really impressive. Uh, so I was actually going to say, we were having a recent conversation with someone who I can't remember. I think it was Nick Fowler. I think it was Nick Fowler, um, who's the brute strength uh, head, yeah. of, head of coaching. Yep. He's got a lot of good athletes. And he was saying that for his best athletes, tra- uh, like competing does become the most important skill to train often. He said because a lot of the athletes that he trains have so much or have such a large foundation, such a big base of, of training already, that really what they're doing is just learning how to use their skills in combat better. And so if anything, he's getting his top level athletes to compete more and more often and his lower level athletes to compete less and less often. Because he's like, it's just about coming there. Because he, he was saying, you know, because they have such a massive pool of athletes. He's just saying that someone, I think he used the example of Becca Voigt, you know, mm. maybe hasn't really improved anything in her training for, I don't know, well, how long has she been competing? Like 12 years. So maybe she hasn't improved in like three years and she's obviously like quite a bit older now. But I mean, what she is... to the game or games 10 times. So yeah. I mean, that's a pretty... Yeah. But impressive. she like came back from like not qualifying and he's like all it is I just watch her and I'm like yeah she's just better than uh, competing than all the other girls around her all the young bucks coming through have got 10-15 years in her they're definitely fitter like they're definitely stronger but why is she beating them because she knows how to pace herself she knows like not to get wrapped up in it like she knows how many points are on the line all that sort of stuff and so he's like that is what makes a difference yeah I mean I can definitely agree I mean I think you have to be a good competitor you know I mean we're competing in a sport yeah um <coughs> basketball i was always really good at it i just used a lot more anger back then <laughs> than i do now i'm usually a little too tired to let that out now um but i think i can definitely understand that on how you would because training for me is just not that it's easier but i've just done it really well for so long mm. and made sure i have closed the gap like pretty close to my competition times but then it's just being able to get a little bit more out like on event <coughs> excuse me uh what was that five the chipper one the one that you won yeah yeah event so five, yeah. i was two minutes faster at regionals oh wow then i minutes. was yeah then i was here um because you just was just so angry yeah and i mean when my back's against a wall i figure it out yeah I just always have. That's like, and that's why everybody's like, man, you always make these events so stressful because you bring it down to the last <laughs> two workouts of regionals. And I'm like, that's definitely not my intention. And yeah, I don't yeah. like doing that to myself at all, <clears throat> but it is. Um, so I think I just have to actually figure out how to almost like create that mindset in my head from the beginning mm. and then just hold that the whole time. Even if I am doing well, just not letting that mindset get lost 
and like staying focused because then even a one and a three is way better than a three and a 29, Mm -hmm. you know? Um, but then being able to pull out that extra gear that two minutes faster, 30 seconds faster on event six, whatever, being able to pull that out and put it on each workout. And that's what Noah's really good at. Right. Right. So like event four, we pretty much like switch times. So my oh, train time was 540 and right. he was like 615 and right. I was 610 and he was 540. Yeah. Right. You know, so it's like those little mistakes cost me the trip of going back. Mm. Um, but I mean, kind of going to move past it and move on. And will you go out to the games this year to watch? <laughs> I bought tickets for our gym. Okay. Um, I always have said if I'm not competing, I shouldn't be there. Right. Um, but I also think I can learn probably from just watching and sitting back. Um, hey, I just need 30 seconds of your time before we get to the end of this podcast. Have you ever struggled to training goal or don't even know what it is? We've created this for you. If you ever struggle to hit a back squat, get a muscle up or finally make it to regionals, you can use this 100 day training journal to journal about your training morning and night to keep yourself on track through the ups and downs of training. And there's expert advice in there from Max L. Hag of Training Think Tank, Travis Mayer, Brent Fikowski, Matt Fraser, all in there to help you achieve your 100 day training goal. But I do have two kids and a wife at home and they're kind of more important than going and watching the games. Yeah. Uh, so if it did line up, possibly, but I don't know. I haven't really thought t- that far ahead yet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I just thought from like a support Noah perspective, but I'm sure you can do that via Instagram or yeah. something. Yeah. I can I mean, follow him on Instagram. Make some, <laughs> you can follow him on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just tell Joanne to uh, stream it live so I can just watch it all live. Yeah. yeah. If that, I needed to. It's not on <coughs> games.crossfit.com. No. no, they don't, they don't show me that. Um, so I was going to ask a question about something that you've changed in the last year. Noah being the obvious one um, in your training, did you change anything from like a nutritional perspective? You're still doing the crazy amount of carbs because I know, did you change nutrition coaches or no? Mm-hmm. No, you didn't. No, so Maybe I... Maybe that was the year before. Last yeah, so podcast. I work with a company called Macro Stacks who pretty much generates meals and food that that helps hit your macros for the day and it kind of like tells you what you should be eating so that you hit those numbers at the end of the day for each meal. Uh, but I work with one of their nutritionists that is actually one of my coaches here and my brother-in-law, well, my brother-in-law's brother. Um, yeah. so I work with him that he kind of just helps me out. But honestly, over the last six years, I've kind of figured out what works and doesn't work for me. Um, and I spend a lot of time just kind of sticking and eating the same thing I kind of always do. And yeah. I don't get bored with eating the same food. Yeah. Um, so I could literally eat chicken and rice for 30 Forever. days straight yeah, and yeah. just not have an issue and then just change up the rice. You know, <laughs> like I'm completely fine with doing that. Um, but yes, I still take in probably close to 600 grams of carbs some days and especially going into regionals and stuff, it was still pretty high. <laughs> yeah. Are you taking a break from it now though? Yeah. So I mean yeah. like right now, I think I did three like little – fun sessions yesterday and maybe had like 50 grams after each so yeah. 150 versus 600 that after like each one um does it feel very different <clears throat> what like do you just feel different not having an extra 350 grams of carb <laughs> no because my training volume and everything is so low that it doesn't, doesn't matter th- yeah and i feel like i would just be getting fat <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> sitting around eating that much yeah um but for when I am training that hard, I do notice a significant difference if I have like an off day and have like 450 versus like 550 or 600. I notice a significant difference in energy levels and just how my body feels. Tell mm-hmm. um, how many f- freaking bowls of rice you ate at. Uh, <laughs> oh, bowls of rice. Benny Hanna's. I love fried rice. <laughs> There's no doubt about it. Benny Hanna's is the Chinese chain? Is it uh, the Asian chain? Well, Japanese? Japanese? Japanese. Okay. So like yeah. uh, hibachi where they'll like cook in front of you. Iron yeah, foot. Yeah. Oh, oh iron. yeah, 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 yeah. Lead yeah, foot, yeah. Lead foot. Uh, <laughs> so a long time ago, I had a bet with a buddy um, of who could eat the most fried rice in one sitting. <laughs> and so I had seven bowls. He had six bowls and you couldn't get up from the table. <laughs> and if you did, you lost. Um, 
And at the end of it, I ended up eating six bowls. He had five. I ended up winning. It's great. How big but is a bowl? Can you just like give us a visual? I don't know. Is like, it like a like little, a like a little edge uh, bowl like me this? Me and Noah like can only a... eat two. Yeah. Jesus. Okay. <laughs> but so when we went, <laughs> so when we go to Benihana, Jeez. I always happen to get a few extra things of fried rice that I just demolish. It's so good, man. <laughs> <laughs> just, oh, it's so tasty. Makes me want to go there now. Hey, is there one around here? Yeah, there's one like 10 minutes from here. Oh, seven balls. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're about to lose again? No, I don't think I could do that now. That was being like 18 and just being a complete idiot. I mean, we sat there for probably three hours. <laughs> I'm not going to sit there and eat. And it was just take a bite, wait, take a bite, wait. And there, So it was an endurance event. Yeah. yeah. And so we went there so much that the – Pretty much the people knew us by name when we walked in because we would go there like almost every other day. Yeah. yeah that's what you do when you're 18, right? Yeah. <laughs> just eat a bunch of fried rice. Yeah. <laughs> Man, we tried to do like the 10,000 calorie challenge. Have no, you done that? You. No. That's a lot. <laughs> that, that was we – didn't, we didn't do it. Raph got six and a half. I got 8.1, 8.2. Like – Oh, painful. I thought you were saying like six and a half days. But then <laughs> no, six and a half. No, no. That's 6,500 calories. You got 24 hours to do it. I think I could probably could have made it if I was willing to stay up till 4 a.m. But I, I pulled the pin at like... By eating anything. Yeah, you can eat anything. The mistake we made is that we didn't choose dirty foods. So we started with... That's... Like clear. a green smoothie sort of thing. Oh, that <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Worst thing yeah. ever. Yeah. And then like we, we did like toast with honey and, and oh, peanut so butter so you try to do it there. the healthy way yeah. a little bit more healthy but then it went to like ice cream and Doritos and shit like that but by that point it's too late because you're already full well yeah you hit midday and you're like not even halfway and we're looking at each other and Raph's like let's pull out let's pull out like, no one will know <laughs> let's fake it <laughs> I have to do it I have to do it I felt really sick there's a video of it we can watch it after uh, it was miserable I don't know I feel like I could get pretty close you would probably do pretty well the the rule is and we spoke to um Mike Isertal from the RP, RP Strength about it and he's done it and he's like a macro coach he knows about it and he's like these are the big things you don't want to do he's like don't drink caffeine we drank heaps of coffee he's like because suppress your appetite all right he's like don't graze you just want to have large meals and shove them down as fast as possible we grazed all day <laughs> So you uh, talked to him, had these discussions, and then didn't take any of the information. No, no, this is after way. we did it. Oh, oh, yeah, oh, after like, we did it. And that then, seems like such a poor idea if someone's telling yeah. you what to do and you're doing the opposite. Yeah, no. Nah. And then the third thing he was like, I right, eat heaps of fat, like heaps of fatty foods. We ate heaps of high carb foods. We ate <laughs> yeah. like no fat. We went low fat. Yeah, we, we basically to, went low fat. We thought fat was make you full. Yeah, we had <laughs> we had other people telling us they're like, cool, just eat carbs, like eat sorbet and like, you know, drink Gatorade and stuff like that. It was too late. So like we, we screwed I it think, all up. I definitely think I could do it. <laughs> it's, you it's can do it, but it does. It, honestly, it does require a lot of suffering because you feel you feel nauseous. Yeah, I could. You recover so from the nauseous, food. and then ten minutes later, you have to make yourself feel nauseous again. That's that's kind of how it is. It's like imagine throwing up after a beer, and you feel really sick. You're like, man, I'm never touching alcohol again. And then ten you minutes go, later, you someone's like, "You're gonna have to do beer. these five shots." <laughs> oh, you're like, "Oh no!" That's how painful it is. But um, anyway, sidetrack. What um. Will you change anything then, like going into this year? Because you didn't change much, really. Uh, Besides the competing, do you think you'll have you thought about doing anything different? Mm. Get rid of Max. What? Yes, yeah, no. Definitely change not. change uh, to Evan. <laughs> Evan, you're the chosen one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, am I dropping Max? And then he goes, take Evan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, um, from dropping a coach perspective, no, I'm not dropping Max at all. Um, I've pretty much trusted that guy from the beginning, and he's kind of got me to where I am, and I'm not done. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, for me, no, I'm definitely not gonna drop him by any means. Um, sorry, Evan. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it! Uh, Stop writing the design. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. For everything else, I'm going to kind of step back and kind of almost like not look at my brain, but like figure out ways to improve it mm -hmm. um, from a competitive standpoint. Um, there's definitely for me, I think, areas to improve on on that side. And that's where Evan can come into play more. Yeah. Um, but I think everything else, though, I think I kind of did it the right way. It's, I don't think I had like a a bad competition. I just think I made some very small mistakes that it just didn't pan out um 
and so I don't think I need to change too much. Um, I think just for me, it's getting better at competing and kind of staying in the right mindset the whole time. Um, and I think that can kind of, I mean, I, it's almost like in Dubai, it like kind of clicked for me, um, with what I thought I needed to do. Um, but then it just kind of that one workout, it just kind of slid back and the slightest hesitation or slowdown cost me again. So maybe it's just more of a learning curve. And I mean, it happened for a reason. Um, there's a reason I didn't go and I mean, I need to learn from that and mm. figure out a way to not let that happen again. Um, so going back to the drawing board and kind of coming up with a better plan, me and Max have had a lot of emails back and forth recently on goals and priorities and what needs to change or what I think needs to change. Um, so I think we kind of are already starting off on dialing in on what's wrong and figuring out a way to fix it. Mm. Um, what do you think Max will say? He's a man of many words. <laughs> um, more chest, maybe? Yeah. Oh, the first thing he says, man, we need to bench more. <laughs> How much were you benching during the uh, the season? None. None? Yeah. <laughs> no. I mean... Is it because you're worried that it'll make no, your shoulders so, tighter? No. So, we did some progressions a while. I think it was before the games last year. And, I mean, my bench press has always been very, very low. Well, uh, what is it? 315? 315, 1-0? Yeah. 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 Um, but before that, it was way way less. So he, right. we did like a full strength progression, and I ended up hitting like a pretty big PR and hit three fifteen or whatever. And he's like, "All right, that should be like plenty, like in a competition." Yeah. yeah. Uh, so then we kind of stopped. Um, so it wouldn't be three fifteen now, you don't think? <laughs> no. Uh, now, yeah. possibly, because we've benched eighteen million times. Oh, sorry, <laughs> like regionals before to, they announced it at regionals. Oh, uh, so I think I hit like two ninety okay. or something, um, and that wasn't benching very much. Um, but now I probably feel like I could be pretty close to that mm. uh, we've benched a lot mm. since then the f- uh, first day back into the gym i benched um <laughs> feel like doing some bench after this yeah i mean why not we could just do whatever yeah. um but what were we talking about we we're just talking about how much bench you put in during yeah. the season uh, oh yeah it definitely wasn't very much i mean it would be once every blue moon like hey we're just gonna touch it yeah um i mean you there's and that's not on max and that's not on anybody i mean there's 18 million movements in this sport and you never know what's going to come up Mm. um i could have been training bench all year and that's probably what a million people are going to be doing all this year and then you're not going to see it again for three years yeah um so i think you can't get caught up in that um or i don't i mean that's just kind of the way it's always worked we used dumbbells all last year and then we had what one workout with dumbbells in it this year yeah i mean so i think and everybody, of course, did a million things with a dumbbell. Um, so I think I just need to keep working on the things that I need to improve on. And clearly bench press is one of them. Um, but it tightens up my overhead a little bit. Um, and for me, I'd rather be more efficient clean and jerking than I would bench pressing. Yeah. Uh, that comes up way more than bench press ever does. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, it's just making sure I still have touches of it, but still keeping everything else kind of opened up and moving fluid and yeah kind of making sure the overhead stays crisp because handstand walking all of that if i'm just tightening up my pecs and then it's making that position worse it's not worth it too much yeah so there's definitely that's more max and let him figure it all out and yeah just ride it and i'll just do it <laughs> man there was some monsters at um at muscle beach is it muscle beach no south beach at the uh oh, California. The, no miami beach no miami beach south oh, beach oh, miami. Oh, yeah oh. yeah we saw some dudes, and I'm telling you right now, their bench press would be insane, insane. Because all those guys do, they don't, they don't really do legs, right? They're just these genetic freak black guys. They probably don't eat all day. And, I mean, well, how much do you reckon some of them weigh? 275, 285? That's some big dudes. And all they do all day is just do pull-ups and dips and planches. And they have pecs. You know, they've got the massive pecs when the pec has its own shadow underneath. Yeah, it's when the, the nipple chest. the nipple face is straight down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's so much overhang. It's like a muscle tip. Yeah. A muscle tip? Yeah, a muscle tip. Oh, it's so, so big. Just the tip it's like a tip. Of the it's one. like a no, it's like a tip, but it's made of muscle. So that's how big it is. And these guys are just doing cycle and all I could think is like, man, imagine doing Team Linda with these guys. It'd be sick. Yeah, but the endurance might not be there. I don't know, man. They train all day. Like, it's think about their aerobic system. Reps. They're out in the sun for like probably five, six hours a day drinking. I don't know. What do you reckon they're drinking? 
like mojitos. I think they drink. <laughs> <laughs> and they're just, yeah, they're just, they're just killing it. So maybe you should go train with them, Travis. You hey. could use a tan, bro. I, I will agree with that. I could definitely use a tan. Hey, I got a little color from being at the beach for a few days after. Yeah, I mean, going Look at that. Man, we're, we're identical right now. Color white. Yeah. I wonder how much the tan. The tan. It's like chocolate and white chocolate. I wonder how much the actual. Because we spoke to Fikowski about this, and he's like, nah, tanning is something I actually work on before the games, but actually now it's in Madison, so it's not a factor anymore. Oh, no, definitely when we were out in California, I would just sit out after workouts just outside and yeah. just get used to the heat. Yeah. Um, California was always hot. Madison wasn't nearly as hot, um, especially last year with the rain we had yeah. so much. And, I mean, we were there 10 days prior, and it was pretty much like blue skies and sunny every day. And then the week of the games, it was just miserable. Yeah. Um, but the heat relative to California was not even close. Yeah. Um, how, how was that experience overall with the, the change Madison? of location? It was good. It was cool. Um, you prefer California? <laughs> from many aspects, from like an enjoyment aspect to an organizational perspective to the weather, all those things. Well, I think from like a, like the way they run the competition, they get better every year. Um, I mean, the venue at Madison was pretty big. Um, so, I mean, like we would have to walk pretty far in just some of the workouts. Um overall that was a pretty cool atmosphere just to be in um like with the bike track out there and then everybody pretty much being able to watch and just be really close was really cool uh the that like coliseum i guess is the word for the that. indoor one yeah yeah uh simulated the tennis stadium a lot okay um, yeah. i almost felt like it was louder because it's closed in and everybody's right there and i think that was one of the things going into madison that i was like i wonder if this is going to be anywhere close to what the tennis stadium is in california because i mean that was always electric like, yeah yeah and so it was when you got in there and it's everybody started going crazy um so i mean that was still really cool and i think it's for me i think it was pretty just different being in a different location and like the scenery it's a nice change of scenery mm. um California, everybody's there. It's hot, sunny, kind of the same thing every single time. Right. Um, but there were some weather changes. I mean, we're running the first event in rain. Like, it's just different when you're getting some cool aspects like that um, that you can't really train for. Right. Um, Mother Nature. Yeah. Can't train for. But it was colder, right? Yeah. Did you prefer that? Um, I mean, Atlanta's pretty hot, right? Yeah, it's pretty hot and humid. Um, I mean, not... You anything. didn't prefer it or on this? No. Yeah, okay. I mean, sometimes if I wanted to go, like, sit by the pool or something, yeah. But yeah, other than that. No. Yeah, okay. And then from, like, a, you said the organizational perspective has improved with yeah. CrossFit. So I feel like it's always a talking point for us is, like, are they actually improving the sport from, like, a, well, yeah, spectator's perspective, which I feel like went down a little bit this year with some of the stuff, not necessarily the main athletes, but definitely for, like, the masters and the teens huge step step backwards i don't know if you saw the venue they shot it in mm. it looked like the loading bay for the thing like they just set up a rig and oh 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 uh i know what you're talking about yeah yeah they didn't we walked by that every time we would go to the other yeah. floors i like, think putting them in there just made it just look shit from that like they don't care about those athletes yeah. maybe they don't so um from your perspective it obviously improved are you feeling that same effect at regionals because even though it's always gonna exist judging as i feel there should be a diminished as, as much as possible and without naming any names in our region there are people who have like we know personally and have seen personally and like have watched them judge <laughs> they don't know the movements like you go hey what's a thruster like what are the standards what is it and they go what's thruster again they are the judges down on the floor at regionals that for me, that's a huge concern. When yeah. someone who's like a, a part of their livelihood and that and their time investment of the year is is on the line, there's people out there who can't tell you what a thruster is. Yeah, I mean, from the way the competition is run at regionals and the games, I definitely think they're getting better every year. I okay. mean, that's just a learning. I think with anything, um, the longer you've been around, the longer the sport's been around, the more they're going to keep learning about how it needs to run, the way it just needs to flow better or whatever it may be. But from a judging standpoint, 
I mean, <clears throat> I think there needs to be a certain group that are paid to be there and that all know the standards exactly the same. And from region to region, it's not going to vary. And from one heat to another heat, it's not going to change. Um, I mean, you just see some people that say the popping of the hips or rising on the bench. Some people get away with it. Some people don't. I mean, there has to be some sort of like line where it's like, okay, like these people are here to be professionals. And at the end of the day, that's where the sport is right now. And we can't complain about it. Um, but I think over time it will get to that because it's going to have to, um, just to legitimize it a little bit more. Like pay sure. judges. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, just make it instead of like free shirts and stuff, like <laughs> make it to where it's like, this is what I train all year for. Like, this is what brings money in for my family. And mm. this is what like pays my bills. Mm. Um, and then it comes down to say, Hey, Chris wanted to judge and he was pissed off at me for something. And then no rep me 10 times. And that cost me the whole trip to the games, you know, yeah. like, were five no reps that weren't actually no reps by another judge. Do those count? Yeah. And then I go, you know, like, you know, those are things, but you can't, I don't ever think like that because it's out of your control. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's every day in here when we train, Max will just randomly yell out no reps. I mean, I'm just used to like no reps being thrown out and just kind of, you have to accept it and move on. And I think that's the way the sport still is because it's still early on. I mean, what 11 years 12 years or the games has been around 12 years so a mm. little longer um but i think over time it will keep getting better and better um this year i think from all the judges i had they were all pretty well off um like the foot over the line that's clearly the no rep they told us that in the standards so i mean that's on me that's not on them they're doing their job um but i didn't have any issues besides the one bench press that i thought like those were legitimate reps but i definitely know other regions and i've seen like I, you can all everybody sees the workouts and how the regions vary sometimes so i think that over time will improve yeah yeah it's uh it's always going to be a tough one until they have a different course and a different standard yeah. and they pay the judges and that will be one of the most that'll be a glorious day that day they'll we'll be singing praises for at least 10 minutes on our <laughs> podcast yeah <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I definitely just think it it's just going to take time. I mean, it is. And, I mean, it's hard because – and I understand why there almost isn't because there's 18 million movements we do. Mm. Like, in basketball, a foul is a foul. Like, mm. <laughs> check it, like all of that. In any sport, like, the rules are the same. Mm. But in our sport, there's 18 million movements, and yeah. the, it varies across the board on what the actual standard is. On snatch, you can drop from overhead, but on a thruster, you can't jump from overhead. Like mm. little things like that. That or well, now when the bar, when you pass the dumbbell to the other hand, it has to be below the eyes. Yeah, you know. And I think you, the if the standard is going to change every single year, you're just going to have to have a certain group of people that they're just the judges. I don't know. Mm. You know, like at the games, I'd definitely say it's a little more level because most of them are all level one staff. Yeah. Um, that's a big difference. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the people that are definitely teaching the level ones and all of that, but that's most of the judges there. Yeah. Um, so I think unless they do, like, different regions each week and they have certain judges that go around to each region, I don't know. Mm. Well, I mean, look what happened to Latin America. They, I don't know if you if you caught wind of it, but... Well, yeah, the no equipment showing up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and apparently it was a trucker's strike, strike. in Brazil, but, I mean anything goes in that country right who knows yeah. what actually happened um but yeah they're always they're always facing like logistical problems in the early early stages i think and, and raf and i've talked about this i think it was us that we talked about they really need like a big investor to come in and just start dropping millions and tens even billions of dollars to just <laughs> pump this board up as hard as possible <laughs> Billions. I mean, billions. <laughs> get I this thing going <laughs> <laughs> we need we need serious I mean technology will go a long way with the judging I feel will we'll make a big difference I mean they could even have like sensors on like the hips well, I, yeah I mean I think the there even needs to be chips on both feet mm. you know like they base the chip time off of just the left foot but if I technically get to the mat first and it hits my right foot yeah technically I won that yeah but they're only basing it off the That's left foot but I mean yeah. it's like little things like that like 
Yeah. That's the difference in thousands of dollars on a workout. Yeah. Don't and you think that they would have already thought of all these things and there's a reason? <laughs> yeah, they and they're like, oh, we can't pay for them. <laughs> no, yeah. Yeah. We I need mean, more money. definitely. It was even, we got, I got blood tested um, at the regional. Blood tested. Yeah, they drew my blood. Um, wow, that's expensive. And, and so, that's even really at the games, I asked the other regions if any of them did, and they said no. So, I mean, and testing like, you is like really throwing money away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's, not, that's really crazy. <laughs> I definitely agree with that. Yeah, the testing guy comes up. He's like, hey, I'm looking for Travis Mayer. That's me. No, no. Travis Mayer. That's me. No, no. It's obviously uh, not you. I mean, he did this guy's blood. They said he was like out of control. Like, <laughs> Meanwhile, John even, Papp is fine. Even, <laughs> even this year, I know they... Uh, I saw a picture Noah posted where he was getting blood tested. He got blood tested as well. Yeah, he said, yeah. showed a picture. and I mean, they're sitting there drawing his blood. I mean, but that... Is what needs to be happening to every region. They're not even and blood mean, tested. They the even, but they tested first through third blood, and then fourth and fifth were urine, which makes no sense to me. But that was in what was it, 2016. Okay, when they did that, and it was just almost like a trial. I feel like, but I feel like, even if it's expensive, <laughs> pay for it. Like yeah. that's you're mm-hmm. trying to find the fittest individuals, and if someone's cheating and they get around a urine sample, like. Take the blood. Mm-hmm. Like, mm. yes, it's more expensive, but they're not the legitimate athletes that need to be there. Mm-hmm. Like, what if blood was taken for Ricky's perspective? Would he have even made it? Yeah. We don't know. Probably not. But that's what I'm saying. Like, there needs to be a st- – like, if it At wants to be – if, right? if it needs to be a – if it's a clean sport, blood's the number one reason. I mean, you'll find out pretty quick. Yeah. Um, well, but, it just seems like the testing should be consistent for the top five. Yeah. Why? Why are fourth and fifth not getting their blood taken? Do you know something they're that we def- don't know? They're definitely not on anything. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you, you, I mean, you just can't be inconsistent like that because it just no. looks shit. Yeah. I mean, I, I definitely think it's getting better each year, and I think they're doing a better job. Um, but I mean, if it is a money thing, like, get an investor. <laughs> yeah. Like, there's got to be a way to make sure, like, it's not sneaking by or. Mm. Yeah, planning your cycle around it or whatever yeah, yeah. when you know because I mean if you know you're getting I've had them show up here though like they've showed up here I think twice okay and like and the guy was like hey I'll be at the gym at 6am tomorrow make sure you're there don't pee in the morning yeah. and I mean like that just needs to be happening all the time right but I mean I don't know what they're actually doing I mean they can be doing that all the time we don't know yeah and it's not like I follow all those all the athletes so I yeah. definitely don't know well as far as we know from our personal experience and asking people no one in Australia gets tested, random testing, year no, round. Clearly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever that means. <laughs> yeah, there's, um, there's, there's, uh, there's free reign essentially for a full year until regional. Yeah. So, obviously, from just the uh, people showing up the games and versing you, that's super inconsistent, right? So, you get like these cyborgs showing up. I guess it's kind of like Russia versing the rest of the world, right? They can just do whatever they want for four years and then they can show up. And they can be like super enhanced yeah. versus America who has really tight drug testing. Yeah, I mean. Sucks to be American. I feel like the guy you need on the podcast is that guy over there. The guy who knows all of it. <laughs> well, we're going to talk about it. Don't worry. We'll yeah. have time. He's he's the chosen one. <laughs> he the knows, cho- he's, he's the one that knows he's all He's the one that's so. been experimenting on, on Royce. Look at the <laughs> yeah. size of him. <laughs> Oil base versus water base. All that shit. Yeah. That's it, seven. It's, uh, it's not working that well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but Ricky was taking psalms. Psalms are are a liquid. You know, they've actually um just as an update for listeners, they've now scheduled them as like illegal, right? Uh, it's become a scheduled substance in Australia. Yeah. So you can't like before you could just buy it in the nutrition store downstairs from our gym. Huh. Yeah. Um, which was so expensive for me, but convenient. <laughs> and <laughs> now, now it's a, I think it's just like a it. prescription. <laughs> yeah. What have you been taking? <laughs> Look at those delts, man. Yeah. Yeah. So he clearly only does ever buy. That's a <laughs> That's it. You haven't seen it. <laughs> That's a step in the right direction, yeah. which is which is good. Yeah. Right, to to make those drugs schedule because yeah, you could just buy them like a whey like a whey protein, and when the barrier is that low, I think we were talking about this. Half the reason people don't take steroids is because they don't know where to start. They don't know where to get them. Like whose number do you call? But if they're like, all right, go eight hundred steroids. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Yeah. Storage dot com. <laughs> when you just walk downstairs and someone's like, yes, yeah, like legitimate sums, you take them, you get jacked. People know it's easy, right? Huh. That's so. Uh, We'll, we'll see. Yeah, I'll be honest. I have no clue where I would start over here. <laughs> pretty pretty easy to find in Australia. I don't know about America. Yeah. Like, even if you go to our fitness... Evan, Evan's smirking over there, <laughs> so he probably knows exactly where to go. 
Is it, oh, in my left pocket. <laughs> <laughs> like even at our fitness expos, they have like kind of like the Arnold, the yeah. Australian Fitness Expo. There was four or five massive booths that were like Peptides Australia, Psalms Australia, Psalms, whatever. Add, add the thing on Yeah, it, I mean, yeah. I think if you're like, if that's what you're into, go for it. You mm. know, like in Dubai, I know there was, um, <laughs> it's everywhere mm. and everybody's all on it. And I mean, if that's what they want to do and take, I mean, I think that's their choice, but I've always believed that if I can't work for it and earn it, then I don't want to cheat to get my way there. Yeah. Uh, I'd rather just put in the work and whether it's times like this, it suck when you take sixth place, but I mean, you got to take and learn from it and kind of grow and definitely drugs is not the way to do it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, but I mean, if you're not competing or doing anything and you're like Chris, the cameraman and you want to get jacked, get jacked, man. Yeah. I, that's your choice. <laughs> I mean, it's everywhere. People yeah. are going to take it. Yeah. So, it's a massive cultural thing as well, right? To be clear, I'm not on steroids. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, to be clear, he is not on steroids at not all. Yet. <laughs> not yet on steroids. But if he has to hold that camera any longer, he's going to need some. <laughs> that shit is heavy. Heavy. He's been holding it for 59 minutes. Yeah, it's uh, pretty impressive. Um, all right, well, usually we get into the final four questions. Okay. Um, I think that were the, they're definitely probably the same last time. So maybe, maybe you've changed up some of your stuff recently. Ooh. So, first question is... Uh, if you had an opportunity to sit down and interview anyone that's alive today, who would you sit down and interview? I can't remember your answer Kevin last time. Kevin Hart was last time. Mm. Okay. Um, nice. Kevin Hart. <laughs> this is funny, man. I just think of all the things with like him and The Rock, and they're hysterical. You'd interview Kevin over The Rock? Well, Come see, on, then we'll go with The Rock this time. We'll the take Rock. The Rock. <laughs> see, we took Kevin Hart last time. What we'll if I off. trained you? <laughs> <laughs> sure. What, what, we'll is, the rock. what would you ask The Rock that you feel like only you would ask The Rock? Are you natural? <laughs> do you want the answer to that it doesn't matter <laughs> I want to know how he did all his speeches in the WWE and that's more of a question for Chris Thanks, you, <laughs> Chris is a big WWE fan what do you mean sp- like speeches in terms of Promo. like Promo. promos like, like when he would how he would script them and write up the yeah. ideas and stuff okay oh, Chris scripted. yeah so before the games is a great story actually uh, last year at Madison so it was me Noah Max Tony and Chris, we all stayed in the Airbnb together for 10 days prior to the uh, games. And so I've always knew Chris likes WWE, but I never really knew how much. <laughs> Did he wear the belt? <laughs> he in. does have one actually in the office in there. All right, we're getting the belt. He's uh, going to show us on the YouTube video. Uh, so, <laughs> you know, it's like he explained a lot about WWE that I never knew. And we were watching videos probably every night when we all sat and like ate dinner and just were dying laughing about he wanted to script something pretty much where if Savan was to come and ask me a question, I would have a response and like a full like <laughs> spiel of just letting it go and just and so he would show us, like, these matches. He's like, watch, watch, watch. This is about to go down. This is about to be so good. So we sit there and watch it. And he's like, this is what you need to do. And I was like, I definitely could not do it. So all week we would just joke around and imagine that I'm going to be scripting something in front of Savon to try to get the media. Or if I do this workout, rip the mic out of the announcer's <laughs> hand and then have this full speech. <laughs> and, and so now he'll be at random times and there's a – is it the rock that does that part? And he's like, and the fact of the matter is this. And, just, and lose it and just pretty much use that because he's like, you'll definitely get publicity by that and the media will pick it up and love it. But he could carry it on for like five minutes straight and I would just start laughing after like the first sentence I would say. Yeah. And so, it'd still be good. It'd be yeah. better than like, well, I, I did my hardest. <laughs> yeah. I tried my best. Yeah. Well, I've trained hard all year. Like, yeah, yeah. follow my coach's programming and yeah, just yeah. work really hard. So and he pretty much cool. was just like, rip the mic out of her hand <laughs> yeah. and just lose it. So I was like, but that didn't happen. <laughs> but he is a big WWE fan. Chris, what was the name of that show where they brought in, it was kind of like the Tough Ultimate enough. Fighter? Tough, Tough enough. enough. That's where I first appreciated the wrestling on, an, on a different level. <laughs> yeah. So the wrestling did like basically the ultimate fighter or kind of like survivor, I guess. That kind of format where like you bring in all these people and they all want to make it for like one spot, like one contract and they like put them against each other and you see all the behind the scenes of what it takes to be a wrestler. They trained out of control. Like they were training just as much as CrossFit athletes except 
breaking themselves. Yeah. Like, literally oh, breaking no, themselves. Oh, no, I'm not taking anything away from wrestling or any of that. No, no I know I you're not. Think it's, well, I think it's, people should learn more about it. Yeah, I just think it's hysterical. And then, he, oh, he body slammed a giant teddy bear at this person's house. No, nope. I pedigreed. What? <laughs> pedigreed. Pedigreed. <laughs> This teddy bear and pretty much jacked up his knee. <laughs> but yeah. it's funny. Yeah, it's it's cool sport. And I mean, so the rock people is super the answer famous. to that question. Yeah, but it's also a good place to send athletes like yourself when you're done with real sport, like Ronda Rousey, and you know you hey. have a good personality to to like keep your athletic dreams alive and still make money. So we'll get you in, Trevor. Trevor the feather. <laughs> I don't know if Trevor the feather would work. Maybe it would. He, well, just, he looks like a little feather, but yeah. then he's really good. Who knows? I don't know. And you just yeah, you would do like six matches a night because you like <laughs> you were a previous crossfit, so you have heaps of endurance. That's maybe the thing. <laughs> um, yeah. So that that was a good answer. The Rock. Um, so s- second question: Do you have a do you have a new routine that you started this year that is like essential to? the success of maybe a training day or just any day in general? Did you introduce some new habit or routine? Um, trying to think. Fried rice. Yeah, fried rice, seven bowls. Uh, probably positive and negatives written down after each workout. Like okay. what I took away that was good, what I did that was negative or could have been improved on. Every uh, single workout? Most of them. Okay. Was that... What was the thing that you found in that that was helpful that you weren't expecting would be helpful? How much you get negative. Right. Like um, how, how much negative you can write and it's yeah. hard to write positive stuff. Yeah. Right. Um, just like the simplest things like and just like a little – like just say you're doing a 5K or something and then the amount of thoughts that come up that might be like slightly negative or just slow down a tad or – man, but whatever it may be. Um, but then when you start like writing those things down and – getting a better understanding of it and what's actually coming up to be able to stop that in the future. Right. Um, and I definitely think the more you become aware of it, the better you can improve on it. Um, and so for me, that was something that I'll probably continue to keep doing and keep learning uh, to make sure that those little slip ups might not happen again because I'm more aware of it and notice when it's coming or something. Do you do it at regionals as well? Mm-hmm. Positive and negative? Do you have them? Oh my god, here we go. Whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, I won't let you read, but I'll show you. <laughs> Negative? I don't know, you fucking piece of shit. Yeah. Do you pull out, like, uh, do you call out individuals in it? Like, this dude on my left, asshole. Uh, no. No, there's um, like, there's probably some serious abuse. Yes, I mean, event one, event two, event three, event oh, four, wow. event five, event six. All right, give us. You uh, should post them like the Brent Fikowski diaries. You don't want to give any of them away? No, I mean, I just think. A bit rude? <laughs> no, I mean, I just think it's my Good way doc. of. Yeah, of talking to myself and kind of that's me and I mean I'm not the most outspoken person about a lot of things so I mean I'd probably it wasn't much written for event 5 was it just like you the fucking man bro pretty much (laughs) (laughs) it was like man you did what you actually needed to do yeah you just waited till the final day (laughs) so now it's too late yep now it's too late and now you're sitting home fuck Uh, but no I mean I think for me yeah it's definitely even I have them from the games and stuff like that but just it's just learning and continuing to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it's definitely, I'm not always perfect and don't always do it every day. Um, but I mean, I think it's something I can it's continue, good to continue to keep working on. Yeah. Uh, is it, was it your idea to do that or did Max tell you to do it? No. So we, man, we've tried so many things over the years. Um, and then like certain things like will really stick. Um, but we actually had, if I didn't send him my training and nutrition and like my results and everything every day i'd pay him a hundred dollars every day i didn't do it uh-huh. so when you have to start spending a hundred dollars every time you don't send a result yeah i'm not doing that with kyle no way yeah, yeah. And well you'll start sending results very quickly oh, when the credit card just gets charged and you get an email oh it's a oh so oh. he would he would just tell john and john would charge it oh man so like no wonder he's got so much equipment and shit here now <laughs> <laughs> it only how about this it took two times and hasn't happened since oh wow <laughs> Because my wife was like, you seriously are losing $200 right now because of this. <laughs> and I was like, okay. So she would set an alarm on her phone, so she made sure I sent it. Oh, wow. That's good. But, I mean, it's but, now, but now but now it's just a habit, you know. Mm. I mean, mm. just doing it for long enough and sometimes having a drastic consequence consequence for that. Yeah. I mean, because he would always just be – I would be like, all right, I'll do it. I'll do it. Blah, blah, yeah, yeah. And then 
he's like, all right, well, we're going to do this. We're going to, you're going to pay me a hundred dollars every time you don't. And I was like, Ooh, I don't <laughs> think I can. Yeah. And then of course I agreed to it. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, yeah you only have to lose a couple hundred bucks in real uh, days. Even once. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> even once it stings. Yeah. I'm it's like, stings cause how it's could so you small. do this to me? <laughs> <laughs> it was an hour late. No, <laughs> or it'll be like the next morning. He's like, that was not the day of. And Shit. so I just make sure when I'm done, you just send it right at night and you're good. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Maybe I need to do something like that. Uh, How about this? They'll hold you accountable. I know. You I know. definitely won't be able to slack off. No, but I feel like that will have me working out at like midnight. <laughs> <laughs> Crawling out of bed at like 3 a.m. <laughs> Must train and post. <laughs> I the training going. I actually got really, really bad. Over here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, got much worse. <laughs> training times are not good. Um, yeah, cool. Um, the next question. This will be a tough one, but so yeah, yeah. Is there anything that you've changed your mind on that was a strong held belief of yours for the last year? In the last year, did you change your mind on anything? Hmm. Trevor the feather. Uh, the, uh, <laughs> my name. Uh, <laughs> I change anything. You guys renovated the gym, right? Yeah. Right, that's a bit of a change. Why did you feel like you needed to do that? Space Just make was more efficient. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'm thinking like something drastic. Chris filming the day in the life. I did get a new house. I did have another kid. She wants another one. Are you going for three? Probably yeah. Just because Kyle has two and you want to have one more? <sighs> Definitely not. <laughs> but, no, um, I mean, we want to keep them close. And I think ever since the beginning, I've always said two or three. But she's, she. I mean, I feel like she could be a baby factory. You know, she, <laughs> she could just have like 10 and be content. And I'm like, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's stop it. Two or yeah. three. I mean, three, you're outnumbered, though. You right. Know? When you have two, like that. when you have two, it's like, okay, you take this one. I'll take this one. Mm. But when you have three, but our oldest son will be older. So, I mean, he's still, even now, he's, you just let him go. No <laughs> one just go wherever. Yeah. Um, Have you got him training yet? Have you got him doing like gymnastics or? You know, today was his first day of gymnastics. That's right, why I was getting in here a little later. Yeah, awesome. Um, so, he went and had his first gymnastics class. He's two and a half. And they pretty much just ran around, hopped, climbed over things, did some forward rolls, cartwheels. Of course, those are spotted and assisted yeah um and then just did that for 45 minutes and he had a blast and now he's here to do some strength work as well and some yeah so yeah. we're on a <laughs> fly str metric strict program <laughs> written by max uh that he has to <laughs> perform T -T -T or, he juniors. To, or he has to pay a hundred dollars ttt juniors put your score in ttt tots <laughs> <laughs> oh that would that would be a poor poorly selling program you never know that training think tank tots i don't think it would do very well why? Mm -hmm. Well, I just don't think like tiny two-year-old kids need programming from Maxwell Hag. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Do you want to be a champion? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's true. And it starts the same way in but like, who knows gymnastics if it'll be worth and it. soccer and all those other sports. Yeah. Kids start that young. I well, mean, the kid I used to work for in motocross started riding when he was four. Oh, shit. Yeah. And then he four, went pro. Four, wow. Four. Wow. And then he went pro. Yeah. Is he making it big now? No, so he stopped. Oh, okay. Do you think that um, you'd get him to play like NFL, uh, American football? You know, because obviously it's got huge concussion oh, controversy uh, at the moment. Yeah. I mean, I've always been like, hey, if he wants to play something, let him play it. Um, that's how my parents were growing up. And I mean, I played hockey, basketball, football, baseball, motocross, track, cross country. I mean, I've kind of played a lot of sports and... I feel like it just kind of helped in general and just being well-rounded and kind of enjoying all of it. Um, but, I mean, if he wanted to play something, I wouldn't have a problem. It's the wife, if she would want to. She's, right. of course, more like, no, definitely not. Um, I always feel like soccer. I always feel like that would be a good sport. Gymnastics is a good sport, just like body awareness, control. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, whatever he wants to do. If he wants to play the piano or whatever. It's not really a concern. No. Yeah, okay. Let the kid follow his own dreams. Yeah. I mean, it's just, uh, it's not, uh, I'm, I follow a similar, oh, I agree, I should say. But um, after watching that movie, Concussion, it's pretty scary. Like, yeah, we were talking about it with Trip Smith. We we're going to see him, he like trained 2,000 athletes, yeah. 2,000 NFL athletes. And he was saying like, every time you're, you see stars, that's a concussion. 
And like for those guys, Damn, you see stars in every of, single practice. A lot of stars. Yeah. <laughs> in motocross. Oh. Yeah. That's really I mean, not good was, for you. There was times I don't know how I got home. I don't know how I got out of my gear. Yeah, right. It was I can just tell you like bits and pieces. Like I remember opening my eyes, seeing the medics, closing my eyes, and then I was home. Wow. Are you awake during that time? Yeah. Okay, so you're awake, you just it just disappears just, from your yeah. memory. Right. So like my dad said I asked him the same question a million times, like how did I get here? What are we doing? Why am I not riding? How did I get home? Mm. What happened? How many times do you reckon that would happen over your motocross career? Uh, that bad? I think it was probably only like twice. Okay. Uh, but I mean, I've hit my head plenty of times. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> to the point of seeing stars? Yeah. Oh, fuck. I mean, you hit the ground at 50 mile an hour. I mean, yeah. it's not a comfortable <laughs> feeling at For all. your brain. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, shoulders legs i mean you've uh, yeah, yeah it's pretty nasty yeah yeah um, but i was thankfully enough i didn't get ever too injured yeah relative to what some of my buddies went through yeah um okay and the last question favorite favorite book in the last year maybe one of those mental coaching books that you've resonated with and then a quote if you have one but if mm. just a book i'm happy with book champion's mind i like that book is that the one we've read I think so, yeah. We we did get it. Someone, I think I actually think Max recommended it like two years ago uh, as one, one of the only book. It's like got a black blackish cover. Yeah. With a person yeah. on like a three point start, it tells like stories of yeah. lots of like gold medal athletes and yeah, that sort of stuff. So it's it's pretty cool. Uh, not the one where book. we interviewed the author. No. Oh okay. That book. Yeah yeah. What was the one where we interviewed the author? What was that one called? Uh, how bad do you want it? How bad do you want it? Uh, Have that's you read a good that? One too. That's yeah, a good one. Yeah. <laughs> Short and to the point, mm. you know, in that book. Yeah. It's not like some, like, 500-page book. No. Nah. Awesome I, stories, direct lessons, yeah. the science behind it. Yeah, it's Quick, awesome. Yeah. Easy. Uh, Great book. Quote. Mm. Corpus animus. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. It's probably just the same one with Max. If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. We use, we've been using that one all since your podcast. There's a few quotes that stick with us and then we'll we'll bring them up whether it's in business stuff or talking to other people. That one's come up a lot. Well, that's that's yeah. on our core values, right? It's on the wall, yeah. 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 I mean, that's a... Uh, I mean, it's one that's always stuck with me. Um, and I feel like it just kind of makes sense for like mine and his journey like the whole time. Yeah. Because um, clearly going fast by myself doesn't work. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? <laughs> Got to go somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, pretty much. That nice. And there is a, at this stage, we don't really know, but we could know in like 24 hours. But for those of you listening, maybe we'll add it on to the, I've got full confirmation on TM, but you may be coming to Australia for some uh, training pew, pew, seminars. So if you want to meet, if you want to meet Trevor the Feather, <laughs> Oh god, this is gonna be the new name that sticks. <laughs> then uh then you can maybe see him in Sydney, but we'll yeah. can we'll confirm it at a later date. But Trevor the Feather, thanks so much for being yeah, on. Man. Appreciate you can it. Call me Timmy the Tool Man, who knows? <laughs> that thanks, was Trev. Max's name right. this year. Alright, awesome. Thanks, bro. Thanks, dude. Thanks. And that's a wrap. Bing-o-bing.